you guys know that you could run VS Code on your remote machine? What I mean is the UI and the interface is on your local machine, but all the backend stuff is on the remote machine. And by that, I mean, you no longer have to use Vim. I, I know this is game changer to all the Vim users, never personally been a fan. Anyway, everything works as if you were just running on your local machine. Let me, let me show you guys, come on. All right, guys, so I've got my Visual Studio Code up and running on my local machine. I'm just gonna give you guys a quick demo. At the bottom left of my VS Code, there's a symbol to open a remote window. This is pretty much how we are going to SSH into our remote server through Visual Studio Code. I'll go ahead and click here, connect to host. I've already got my host configured and set up. So that was pretty quick. It might seem like there was no configuration involved and that was only because I had already an established SSH connection between my local machine and my server. And yes, it's literally that simple. You just install an extension on VS Code and SSH into your server. That's cool and all, but why would anyone do this? For one, let's say you're tasked with building a program for your company or even a client and one of the requirements is that you have to run the code on a Linux machine. Regardless, if your preferred IDE is VS Code, then you're in luck. You could literally just SSH through VS Code and you can perform all your normal functions. Second, it goes without saying that since you aren't using your local machine to develop, you'll be maintaining a pretty consistent environment. What this also means is that it'll make collaboration a lot easier, meaning that if anyone else needs to work on that remote server, then they're guaranteed the same dev environment. Finally, the unspoken use case, in my opinion, would be the fact that you're pretty much ditching your local machine entirely for development. And I completely forgot to mention, you can transfer files very easily. So I literally take the file on my local machine and I can drag it to the folder that I have open. Hopefully you guys can see now why this is some pretty cool stuff and why you might consider doing it. If you guys did make it this far, then consider leaving a like, really appreciate it. Next is the tutorial. I'm gonna walk you guys through how I did everything. I used Proxmox, I set up a Linux container, running Ubuntu, established uh, an SSH connection using key pairs. So yeah, stick around guys. All right, so we're on Proxmox here and I'm just gonna walk you guys through the steps that worked for me. Please note that depending on the virtual environment and Linux distribution you decide to go with, things may look a little bit different. Regardless of that, my steps can still apply and work for you. All right, let's get started. We're gonna go ahead and create a container. And you can just name it whatever you want. Be sure to give it a password, we could hit next. If you're using Proxmox, it'll give you an option to select a Linux container template. I've already got a bunch of templates downloaded. You could easily download these templates yourself. You just gotta go to where your ISO storage is located and at the top it should say templates and it'll bring down a bunch of templates you could download. I'll go ahead and select the latest version of Ubuntu. Then for the disk, I'll store it to where I feel most comfortable. Disk size is completely up to you. It's your judgment uh, depending on what you wanna do on that server. Two cores is what Microsoft recommends users use if they plan to remote into a Linux server. For memory, we'll put two gigs. That's also the recommended amount by Microsoft. And for network, I would definitely recommend putting a static address and you don't want the IP potentially changing. You can hit next, next, and we'll hit start after created. Now, when you're first starting this up, your default login is gonna be root and then whatever the password you set, great. So. First thing we're gonna to wanna to do is just perform some updates and upgrades. All right, finally it's done. That did take quite a bit, but we can now go ahead and create a new user. I'm creating a new user because I want the added security of not having to use root. It's pretty much frowned upon to have SSH access to your root account, given the fact that a lot of bad actors can actually take advantage of an account with escalated privileges. So that's why we're just gonna be making one. All right, so we'll just type add user and then the name of our account. I'll do home lab, then just input your password. Now for this part, this is totally optional. You could put your full name, room number, work phone, home phone, other, up to you guys. All right, so as you can see, the user home lab was created and they were added to the group users. Now we still do want this account to be able to escalate privileges. So we are going to add it to the pseudo group. All right, so we'll just type user mod dash A, which is add, and then dash G, which is group, and we'll type sudo, and then the name of the user. And just to confirm that the user home lab does have this group now, we could just type groups space home lab. All right, so now we can just log into our new account, log out, and I'll log in. Great, now that we're logged into our new user, we can actually start setting up SSH. First, we'll make sure that we are in our home directory, and yes, we are. 
Now, next thing we want to do is list out all the files in our directory just to make sure that there is not a .ssh directory already. And looks like there's not. So we're going to have to make one. All right, and making that missing directory is pretty straightforward. We just type mkdir tilde slash dot ssh forward slash. All right, now inside our dot ssh folder, we'll go another file called authorized underscore keys. Making this file is pretty straightforward as well, except this time we're using a command called touch. So we'll just type touch tilde forward slash dot ssh forward slash authorized underscore keys. And looks like we're good. Now, another security step we could take here is actually changing the permissions of the .ssh directory and the file we just made. So what we want to do now is make sure that our user, HomeLab, is the only one that has read, write, and execute access into this directory .ssh. Now, the way we actually assign these permissions is through numerical values. I've got a calculator pulled up here, which can actually assist us in doing this. So like we said, the owner, HomeLab, needs read, write, and execute access. The numerical value conversion of this is 700. So what we can type now is chmod 700 and then the directory. Now we also want to change the permissions of the authorized underscore keys file we just made. This time, however, we are going to get rid of the execute option. Now, in order to confirm that our permissions were made correctly, we can type ls space dash ld. And there you go. Our directory has the read, write, and execute permissions. And looks like our file is correct as well. Read and write. We'll be using PowerShell to create our SSH keys. So on our local machine, we'll look up PowerShell. Something to keep in mind here is that if you're using Windows 10 or 11, your PowerShell should come with an SSH key generator which is great. What we'll do now is list out the content of our home directory. We're looking for the same folder, .ssh. From here, we can just cd into that directory. Now, this is where we run our ssh key gen command. We'll just type ssh key gen. As you can see, it is generating a public slash private RSA key pair. I'll go ahead and give this key a name. I do highly recommend you use a passphrase for added security. So now if we list out the directory, as you can see, it generated two keys, the private key, which doesn't have an extension and the public key dot pub. From here, all we have to do is copy over our newly created public key onto our authorized underscore keys file that's sitting on our Ubuntu server. Essentially, we're taking the content of our public key that we just created and copying it and sending it over to our Ubuntu server and pasting it into the authorized keys file. So we'll just hit enter. So I did make a silly mistake here. Just be sure not to include a trailing backslash here. So now we'll just hit enter. We'll say yes and put our password. There we go. Seems like nothing happened, but let's go check out our server. Confirm that our public key is in the file. We'll just nano into the authorized keys file. And there it is. Now, because I do have SSH key authentication set up already, what I like to do now is remove the ability to authenticate via my password. I also like to disable root login completely. Stick along if you want to see that, or you can skip ahead to the VS Code part. All right, so we'll CD into Etsy SSH. Now, all we want to do is sudo nano into the sshd underscore config text file. And this is where we make changes to our SSH config. First thing I'm going to change is permit root login. We're going to change this to no. Be sure to take out the comment here. Lastly, we're going to find password authentication. We're going to take out the comment and also switch that to no. Perfect. Now all we have to do to save this is hit control X, hit Y and enter. All we have to do now is restart the SSHD service. Do that by typing sudo systemctl restart SSHD. All right, well, I guess from here, we can go ahead and start developing whatever it is we need to develop, right? I do not want to develop in this environment. I prefer Visual Studio Code. So we'll head over to VS Code. First thing we want to do here is install the necessary extension. I'm just going to head over to extensions, search up SSH, and it will be the first one by Microsoft right here. So I've got it installed. Now, just as I showcased in the beginning of the video, I'm going to head over to the bottom left section, hit open a remote window, then hit connect to host. Now, this time around, we are going to hit add a new SSH host. What we're going to do here is type SSH, then your username, that's home lab, and then at the IP of your server. 
Now it's also going to ask you to select the SSH config file. We're going to hit the first option right here. It looks like the host has been added. Now just to double check, we'll go back here again, connect to host, and there it is. Now it will prompt you to select the platform of your host. Mine of course is Linux. And yeah, you will get this error message, but that's totally fine. We're just gonna hit more actions, open SSH config file, select our config. And in this file, we're just going to edit a few things. If yours is blank, don't worry. All we're gonna do is add a new line, identity file. Basically here, we're just putting the path to our private key. What we can do is just go back to PowerShell and remind ourselves of the path. For me, it's pretty much the same as this. I'm gonna change a few things. Also feel free to change the name of the host. We'll do control S to save and we'll exit out and try again. All right, so we'll select Linux again. Be sure to remember your passphrase in case you had put one. Now, I don't know if you noticed what just happened there, but essentially the VS Code server just got installed onto our remote machine. And we can see that here. We'll go to new terminal, do a quick ls-a, and there we have it. Now that we're pretty much done here, I'll go ahead and put this into practice. For instance, I actually use this to frequently update my website. Now, because the files of my website are on a GitHub repository, I'm going to go ahead and pull the repo. In order to pull the repository, we do need git installed. We're just going to type sudo apt install git. Now, what I also like to do is create a directory for where the repositories will reside on my Linux machine. All we have left to do is clone the repository. If I wanted to, I could go ahead and clone the repository via the command line, but there is a much easier way in my opinion. What we can do is head over to the top and click on help and then welcome. The welcome page includes this start item called clone git repository. That item wasn't there previously. It only appeared after we installed git on our Linux device. And because I am signed into GitHub on VS code, I can just easily clone my repository. Cool thing here is that it's asking me where I want to clone the repository. Go ahead and select repos and hit okay. And I'll hit open. All right, and what I'll do to make my experience a little bit easier is install an extension called Live Server, and I'm going to install it on the Ubuntu device. And now with this extension, I can basically see all the live changes I make to my website. And if I'm satisfied with that change, I could go ahead and commit this change and push it to my repository. And yes, all this being done through my remote server. If you guys found this video helpful, consider leaving a like. Also, consider subscribing if you guys do want to see more videos like this. I also want to announce that HomeLab does have its very own Discord, so if you guys have any questions or just want a community to hang out in, then consider joining my Discord. And I'll see you guys in the next video.